Welcome, my name's Chris Orwig, and we're here at Photoshop World in Las Vegas. And what I want to do in this movie is share with you a couple of tips that will help you get more out of Lightroom 2.0. All right, well here we have this photograph of the musician Jack Johnson. Now, I like this image, yet there are a couple of problems. One is I need to crop this. Two is I need to work a little bit on the overall light or the color or the tone of this image. All right, well first let's start off by cropping the image. In order to access the crop tool, you can press the R key. You can press the R key from any module inside of Lightroom. So when I press the R key, I notice I have this nice crop overlay. I can actually cycle through different crop overlays, which may help me evaluate the image. If you press the O key, you can see here that I'm cycling through some different crop overlays. Well, one of the things that I notice as I go through those different overlays is that I think there's a little bit too much headroom above this, above at the top of this image. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down one of the corner points here, and I'm simply going to click and drag down. Now I can see the area that's going to be cropped off, and it's the area that's gray there. I'll reposition the image. That looks pretty good. Then double click to apply that crop. Okay, I think that's a little bit more interesting. It's a little bit more about the person, a little bit less about the environment. I like that. Okay, well now on to the color and tone. I'm going to go into the basic panel. I'll open up the basic panel here inside of the develop module, and I'm going to increase exposure just a touch add a little bit of fill light, and I like to think of fill light as reflective light. It's almost like you have a reflector and you can bounce some light into those shadow areas, like the shadow areas in the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the, the fill or reflective light in there. Okay, that looks quite a bit better. Add a little bit of contrast here, and then save some of the highlights there with recovery. Let's look at our before and after. We'll do that by pressing the backslash key. So here's before, and here's after. Okay, the image is going in a good direction, except there's just a, there's a little bit too much of a shadow around the eyes. So in order to fix that, I'm going to navigate to the adjustment brush. Now you can either select the adjustment brush from the tool strip. You can notice it right here underneath the histogram. Or you can press the shortcut key. This is one of those shortcuts that's worth writing down. It's the K key. So I press the K key. I'm here inside of the adjustment brush, and I'm going to go to the effect of exposure. With exposure, I'm going to increase exposure just a touch here. Size of my brush, I'll hover over the image, that's much too big. So I'm going to decrease it. A couple different ways to decrease it. Easiest way is to use the bracket key. I'll press the left bracket key. Now I have a much smaller brush there. All right, auto mask, I'm going to turn off. Feather, I want a pretty high feather amount. Not quite that high, though. I'll go down to the 50s. My flow, I'm going to take way down. You can think of the flow as the intensity of the effect. With a low flow, you can paint some, and it just a little bit of the effect is painted in. Then you can slowly build it up more and more and more. So I want a pretty nice low flow there. And that looks pretty good for my brush. And now I'm just going to go ahead and begin to paint over these shadow areas of the eyes. Now, when you're doing work with light, or you're doing work with shadows and bringing light into shadows, you want to make sure your adjustments are pretty subtle. Those are a little bit too strong, so I'm going to decrease my flow amount here so it's they're even less, so again, I can just build this up as I'm painting this in. I'll go around the other edge of the eyes there, a little bit of light in the corner of the eye. Now to see the before and after, all that I need to do is click on this toggle switch here, and it will show me the before and then now the after. To see the overall before and after, I'll press the backslash E. There's my before and there's the after. Now you'll notice that there's a little pin or a little node, and that's showing me that I've made an adjustment. I can hide that if that's distracting by pressing the H key. Now that adjustment's still there, it's just hiding that little node or that little marker, that little pin. Press the H key to bring it back. All right, well that wraps up this movie, and in this movie I hope you picked up a few helpful tips that will help you get more out of using the crop tool as well as the adjustment brush.